First, I'm going to show you how Jimi Hendrix usually played this chord. I'm going to show you one more thing that you can do with this chord. And this is something that Stevie Ray used to do. Hey everybody, welcome to John's Guitar Lounge. I am Johnny Stewart, and today I'm going to show you how to play the Jimi Hendrix chord. Now that is this, and I'm going to go over this in great detail, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to play it. Now this is the E7 sharp 9 chord, and I'll tell you what all that means in a couple minutes. But why did they call it the Jimi Hendrix chord? Jimi did not invent the chord. He wasn't the first person to play it, but he was the first person to really bring this into the forefront of like mainstream rock music in the late 60s. Most famously in his song Purple Haze. <laughs> So let's get right into it and learn how to play it. Now first I'm going to show you how Jimi Hendrix usually played this chord, and that was with all four of his fingers up here at the seventh fret. But I'm also going to show you a couple variations on this with some easier ways to play it if you can't do this with all four fingers yet. So the way Jimi played it was like this. You take your middle finger and you put that on the A string on the seventh fret, then you take your index finger and you put that on the next string over, your D string, on the sixth fret. Then you take your ring finger, and you put that on the next string over from there, on the G string, also on the 7th fret. Then you take your pinky finger, and you're going to put that on the next string over from there, the B string, on the 8th fret. So to go one string at a time, the A string, the D string, the G string, and the B string. Now you might be noticing that this is pretty similar to another chord that I showed in an earlier video, the E9 chord. Now, how does the E7 sharp 9 differ from the E9 chord? I'm going to show you right now really quickly, and that is an E9 chord right here, and you can play that with just three fingers. For an in-depth look into this chord and what this means and how to play it, then you can check out that other video, which I will link in the description to this video. But you can hear there's that one note difference, and that is the sharp 9 versus the regular 9. And what does all that mean? Really quickly, really quick theory lesson, I promise, super quick. This is the root, this is the third, that's the flat seven, and that's the sharp nine. Now if you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button to like it so that YouTube will push it out to more people so that they can learn from it too. Now those numbers that I'm saying, you know, seven and sharp nine and all that stuff, that is all based on the major scale. I'm gonna show you exactly what that means with a really quick and easy theory lesson right now. So this is the root, or the one, then that's the two, then the three, then the four, then the five, then the six, then the seven, and then the eight. So then the eight, you'll notice, is the same as the one, and those are both the root note, but the eight is the one, just one octave higher. Then the two is also the nine. You can follow that right up. Then the same thing with the G sharp, that's a three when it's down the octave, and it's a 10 when it's up the octave. So that's enough theory because I don't want to bore anybody. If anybody has questions on that theory, just ask me in the comments and I will get back to you on it. Now what if you want to play the same chord, but you can't use all four fingers for whatever reason? You can also play it down the neck, down here. And I'm going to move the camera, and we're going to come down here. And we're just going to be playing in these first three frets. So we're only going to be playing our top four strings. We're going to take our middle finger and we're going to put that on our D string on the second fret. And see, that's that E note, the root. Then to play the third, we're going to use our index finger on our first fret of our G string, the next string over. Then for these next two notes, you can do three different things, really. I'm going to show you three different ways right now to do it. You can take your pinky finger, and if you can make a short bar with your pinky finger, so now this is cutting your ring finger right out of the whole mix here. We're going to lay that across both the high E string and the B string on the third fret. And you'll notice that sounds exactly the same. It's got the same voicing as playing it up here. Same exact notes. Now, what if you can't use your pinky for whatever reason? You can also do that with your ring finger and lay the ring finger down. Now, this might be a little bit more awkward. You see, you got to stretch a little bit. But to be able to play short bars, I've got a whole video series on bar chords, including how to play these short bars with just one finger on two or three strings. So I will link those in the video here, too, so you can see that and practice this. But notice it sounds exactly the same. The chord is the same. It's just different ways to play it. As of today, as I'm making this video, I have over 
6,500 subscribers, and I can't tell you how cool that is and how much I appreciate it. The more subscribers I have, the easier it is for me to get interviews with great guitarists, which you can see all the cool people that I've interviewed so far right on my channel, and it gets me in a lot more doors. So thank you for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Thanks. You can just take all four fingers and play that same thing that I just showed you right here with your middle finger on the second fret on your D string, your index finger on your G string on the first fret, and then take your ring finger and put that on the B string on the third fret, and your pinky finger on the high E string on the third fret. And that's the same chord. Now, why would Jimmy play it up here if you can play it down here? You might think it's because he was always up here soloing, so maybe it was easier for him just to stay in that position instead of going back and forth like that. And that very well might be true, but also, as a practical matter, he also used to often play that low E string open. Even though you don't have to, you've got all the notes you need in the chord just on those four middle strings right there. But to give it more oomph, and I'll show you what I mean, listen for a second. Here's without the low E string. Here's with the low E string. Now listen again. Without, with. Hear that extra bassiness? So especially for like a three-piece band like he played in for most of his career, that can really help to fill out the bottom end and fill out the, the entire you know, auditory spectrum without interfering with the bass that Noel Redding was playing. There are also practical reasons for this too. Let's take the chord shape down the neck again. And let's say you accidentally hit the A string, the next string down that's that's the open string. That A does not fit the chord at all, see? You want to play that, and if you put that in there, that's going to clash pretty badly, doesn't it? So the cool thing about playing it up here is, even if you accidentally hit the low string or the high E string, it's an E chord, and the E is obviously the root of the chord. It's clearly in there. So you can really play the whole thing right open like this. See, I'll show you. I'm, I'm just strumming right through. So you can either play just like that, just on those four strings there. Be very careful just to play those four strings. Or you can play the whole thing. It's still going to sound like the right chord. Now I want to show you one more thing that you can do with this chord that we haven't talked about yet. And this is something that Stevie Ray used to do. Now Stevie Ray Vaughan was obviously a big Jimi Hendrix disciple, and he often played this chord the exact same way that Jimi played it, but he also did a variation. Let's say instead of playing in the key of E, which we've kind of been assuming this whole time, like we're playing in the key of E and that's our, our root chord, our one chord, the main chord of the song, Let's say, now that's the five chord, so let's say that we're going to be in the key of A, like for Stevie Ray Vaughan's song, Cold Shot. Now, let's forget for a second that Stevie used to tune down a half a step and all that. Let's just keep it easy for the lesson. So this is Cold Shot. And I've got a whole lesson on that part of the riff on my channel from a while back, so I'll link that here too so you can see it if you want to learn how to play Cold Shot. But this is sort of like part two to that video, because when you're there and you're in the key of A, now when you want to play the 5 chord, what Stevie would do is, instead of just play the E7 sharp 9, he would take his pinky finger, and instead of it just being on the B string on the 8th fret, he would lay it down across both the B string and the high E string, and this is what it would sound like. These three fingers are all going to be the same. And the pinky finger is also still going to be on the 8th fret on the B string, but we're going to lay it down now, that short bar, across the top two strings. So first, listen to the difference in just the chords themselves. This is the regular way, then this is the Stevie Ray Vaughan way. One more time. Now I'm going to play the cold shot riff, and I'm going to throw both of those chords in and listen to the difference in how it sounds. So first I'm going to play the cold shot riff with the regular E7 sharp 9. Now I'm going to do it with Stevie's version. Now if you want to hear the differences again, just rewind this video for a few seconds and listen to it again, because there is a huge difference in that on the other end. Well, thanks for being here, everybody. I hope you learned something. Hope you had a great time. Check out all my other guitar lesson videos right on my YouTube channel. I have more than 70. Check out my interviews with awesome guitar players and musicians. And stay tuned for all my awesome stuff coming up at the NOM Show in January 2025. And I will see you right here next time in John's Guitar Lounge. Take care.